If you've coded in C for a minute, you've probably used all the features of the language. You've probably made some structures, written some functions. You maybe even have used the C preprocessor. But one feature of the C language that gets a lot less attention is kind of a weird one. Today we're talking about unions, a lesser known feature of the C language with some interesting properties. We'll talk about what the union type does, how it's used in memory, and three examples of how to use them. Let's dive right in. Here I have some C code written out, and you'll notice up top a familiar C feature, the structure. A structure is just a way in C to logically organize variables in a way that makes sense in your program. So my structure may need to have an int and a float, and then some character array, a string uh, of 16 bytes of characters. Now the struct in memory, what this will do is this will actually allocate on the stack or the heap or wherever we use the structure, the sum of the size of all these elements. So an int being four bytes, a float being four bytes, and the string being 16 bytes, this will allocate 24 bytes of memory. Now this makes sense because we wanna have access to all of the different elements of the structure. So we're gonna have room for every single element. Here is the new thing we're talking about, the union. And the union is a little more interesting. When you have a union with different types inside of it, instead of allocating room for every element that's inside the union, the union will only allocate enough memory for the largest element. All of the elements inside of the union lay on top of each other and share the same memory space. And this is going to be reflected by printing the size of all of our structures. Here in our code, we print the size of our union, my onion, onion, and my structure struct. And by printing these out, we can see that the size of our union is 16 bytes and the size of our structure is the previously reported 24 bytes. Now, what makes the union so interesting is that all of the elements in the union share the same memory space. So here, for example, I'm stir copying the string hello world into the buffer that's allocated in the union for the 16 byte string. I'm then able to print out the float of the union, which means that it'll try to represent the string hello world as a float type. And we can see the float representation of that string, which is this crazy long number here. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what is the practical application of the union, right? Like why even have this type in C? What does this do for us? Well, the first example is it actually makes data conversions and access to members within a structure that have different data types very easy. So for example, let's say here that I have the IPv4 address structure, which can be represented as a union. Now, if you didn't know, an IPv4 address is just four bytes, which can be accessed either as four individual bytes or as the long four byte version, the word, right? So if we wanted to set the address, for example, to localhost 127.0.0.1, we could do this in two ways. We could do the really painful thing where we have 127 and then we shift it over 24 bytes and then we make the value equal to this or the current value, right? And that, that gets very mathematically complicated and very kind of hard to represent in code in a way that's easy to read. Or we could use the magic of unions and essentially just overlay two different data types. So by doing this, we can take the bytes 127001, put that into the address. And then when I print this as the actual long form of the address in hex, we get the normal representation of localhost in hex. The second example goes along that same line of thinking where we overlay two different structures structures that have the same value but are represented in two different ways. In particular, this has a lot of power in the world of embedded programming. If you're not aware of how embedded programming works, essentially registers on a CPU live at an address and when you set certain values in those registers, things on the chip physically change. So here, for example, we have a hardware register that has an anonymous structure inside of it. By putting an anonymous structure inside of the union, rule will be allocated for all of the values inside of this structure on top of this integer value. So here we can set the register to, you know, this value here, but then we can actually go in and pull out the individual parts of that register that control different parts of the CPU. So here, for example, we have some made up GPIO register that has different properties like setting the control of that register, the direction of the data, if it's an input or an output, the parity, maybe it's even parity or odd parity, or if it does or does not have start bits. By setting the register to some value, we then can use this to go in and individually access and set and change 
the parts of the register that control specific parts of that peripheral. Before we keep going, I want to tell you guys about Low Level Academy, a place where I'm running courses to teach you more about the C programming language and others. You can check it out at lowlevel.academy and get 20% off a lifetime subscription until the end of the month. We'll see you there. Maybe you don't care about data conversion. Maybe you're not an embedded programmer and that's completely okay. The last one that unions can be used for, which I think is the most interesting and probably the most practical example of a union is this idea of polymorphism, right? So in C, right, we don't have classes. There are no class types. There really aren't any additional types other than the basics of like int, care, etc. And when we make up types in C, we're essentially just concatenating all the primitive types like int, care, float and then naming them something else like person, address, whatever. By using a union, we can do a little bit of polymorphism by having variables that have three different types in a structure at the same time, and then using an outer type tracker to track which type is being used at any given time. We then can write functions that will behave differently based on the type of the structure at that time. So for example, here I have defined a JSON type, right? Maybe we're making a JSON parser and the enum says that there can be three types inside of our structure. There could be a string, a byte or an int. We have that JSON type inside of our structure that is used to track what version of the union is being used at any given time. And then inside of that union, we have those three types. We have, it could be a string, it could be an individual byte, or it could be a number. And that whole thing, the structure with the union inside of it, is called the JSON T. And just so you know, a little quick check on learning, right? The size of this structure will be the size of the type, which is one single byte, plus the maximum size of the union, which is going to be the size of the string here. That's the biggest type, which will be 64 bytes. So this structure will be around 68 bytes, not accounting for padding or optimization or anything like that. Now, when we want to use this JSON type, what we're going to do is we're going to check the type tracked inside of the structure and then handle it accordingly. So if it's being tracked as a JSON string, we're going to print out the string using percent %s. If it's a JSON byte, we're going to print that byte alone using percent %c. If it's a JSON int, we're going to print it using percent %d. Now by doing this, we can make this type a basic structure in C polymorphic. We could say this type is a JSON int and set the number and by printing it using my special print JSON function, it'll treat it almost like a polymorphic class in C++, but using a lot less overhead than the class internals do in C++. Let's try it out right now. There we go, 42. There are some dangers in this. Obviously, because we're in C, the types are not tightly coupled. They're not enforced by the compiler. So if I accidentally in programming said this is a JSON string and not a JSON int and went to go compile this and print it, you know, it'll print the ASCII representation of 42 and not the actual value 42. That's on you as the programmer to figure out and to do correctly. So what do you think about unions? Do you think they're useful? Do you think they're not useful? Go ahead and do me a favor, leave a like on this video and leave a comment about your thoughts on unions and if you've used them before in the past, unions, while powerful, are controversial. Not everyone agrees if they should or should not be used in code bases, kind of like how people feel about the go-to statement in C as well. I made a video about that here talking about if go-to statements are illegal, should they be? Go find out. Go. Okay.